It's no secret that the NASA astronauts and the Corvette have had a love affair since the beginning of the space program. In fact, GM continues to support this Corvette space connection, as evident by the recent C8 reveal, July 18th, 2019, that included former NASA astronauts Mae Jamison and Scott Kelly. So how did the Corvette astronaut connection begin? Well, connection goes back to the C-1, or the first-generation Corvette in the 1950s. NASA Mercury astronaut and first U.S. astronaut in space, Alan Shepard was already a Corvette enthusiast before joining NASA and bought the first year 1953 Corvette from his father-in-law in 1954 for $1,500. He drove the car for about a year while he was a Navy test pilot at the Pax River Naval Air Station, and then in 1959, he drove his 1957 Corvette to his very first day of NASA space training. All in all, Shepard would go on to own 10 different Corvettes. But if it were just one astronaut who loved Corvettes, I'm not sure we would have such a strong Corvette astronaut connection. So let's put this into the context of the beginning of the space program. On October 4, 1957, the Soviet Union put the first man-made satellite into orbit. It was the height of the Cold War, and this event made it clear that the U.S. was behind the Soviet Union when it came to the ability to launch objects into space, including nuclear weapons that could reach the U.S. So the fledgling U.S. space program went into high gear by forming the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA. NASA's first job was to get a satellite into space, but shortly afterwards they started the Human Space Exploration Program with Project Mercury, selecting the first seven astronauts known as the Mercury 7. Six of the seven would eventually drive Corvettes. The Mercury 7 astronauts were all former test pilots and had what author Tom Wolfe would later call the right stuff. They were fiercely competitive individuals and as test pilots liked to push the boundaries of both technology and speed. So what better car for these astronauts to drive than America's sports car, the Chevrolet Corvette? Like NASA, the Corvette also had its genesis in the 1950s. The Corvette got its start when famous GM designer Harley Earl saw the GIs returning after World War II, bringing home affordable European sports cars. And he convinced GM to build an affordable two-seat American sports car for the GIs. Earl's Special Projects crew began working on the car in late 1951 under the secret code name Project Opel, after the German automaker Opel that GM bought back in 1929. Remember the Opel GT of the 1970s? Same company. The result was a hand-built EX122 pre-production sports car prototype. When it came time to name the car, Myron Scott, GM Assistant Director for Public Relations, suggested the name Corvette after a small maneuverable Navy warship. The Corvette prototype was first shown at the GM Motorama in New York City on January 17, 1953, which generated enough public interest that six months later GM made a production version. Now, if it were only Alan Shepard showing up for astronaut training with his 1957 Corvette, we might not have had such a strong connection between Corvettes and the NASA astronauts. What officially started this connection is when Alan Shepard became a national hero on May 5, 1961, becoming the first U.S. astronaut to fly beyond the atmosphere into space aboard a Mercury Redstone rocket for a 15-minute and 22-second suborbital flight. GM President Ed Cole, to honor Shepard for this heroic act, presented him with a brand new 1962 Corvette. The car had a special space-age interior designed by Bill Mitchell's styling team that even included an altimeter. In fact, the spiritual father of the Corvette, chief engineer Zora Arkas Dantoff, even brought Shepard to Detroit to test drive pre-production models of the C2 Corvette. But even presenting America's first astronaut in space with a Corvette would not have cemented the Corvette astronaut love affair if not for a Florida Chevrolet dealer, Jim Rathman, who negotiated a special lease arrangement with GM to put astronauts into Corvettes. Jim Rathman was a professional race car driver and the winner of the 1960 Indianapolis 500, who later opened a Chevrolet Cadillac dealer in Melbourne, Florida, near the Cape Canaveral Space Center in 1961. It was there that he befriended Mercury 7 astronauts Alan Shepard and fellow Mercury astronaut and high-performance car enthusiast Gus Grissom. Rathman convinced GM President Ed Cole to set up a program which supplied each astronaut with a pair of new cars each year for a special $1 a year lease program. Most chose a family car for their wives and a Corvette for themselves. Apollo 12 astronaut Alan Bean recalls the sight of all the Corvettes lined up in the parking lot outside the astronaut offices at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Six of the seven Mercury astronauts leased Corvettes, while John Glenn, first U.S. astronaut to orbit the Earth on February 20, 1962, opted for a more practical family car. All the leased Corvettes were returned to Rathman's dealership at the end of each year, where they were sold to the public without any knowledge they were previously owned by an astronaut. 
that meant that astronauts who participated could have access to a new Corvette every year. Mercury 7 astronauts Alan Shepard and Gus Grissom, second U.S. astronaut in space, had a friendly rivalry not only to become the first U.S. astronaut in space, but also frequently drag raced each other to see who was the fastest on the ground. In the fall of 1966, both Shepard and Grissom took delivery of identical brand new second generation 1967 427 cubic inch 435 horsepower Corvette Stingrays. Grissom, having lost to Shepard as the first U.S. astronaut in space, always hated losing to Shepard, so privately asked Jim Rathman to enhance the performance of his Corvette by widening the rear wheel openings to allow room for bigger tires and put in a 456 posi traction rear end. As a result, Grissom won every race and who knows if Shepard ever knew about the enhancements. Sadly, just a few months after receiving his 1967 Corvette, Gus Grissom, along with astronauts Roger Chaffee and Ed White, first U.S. astronaut to walk in space, tragically died in the Apollo 1 fire on the launch pad on January 27, 1967. While many astronauts took advantage of this lease program during the Moon Exploration Program, the crew of Apollo 12, Pete Conrad, Dick Gordon, and Alan Bean took it to another level and ordered matching Corvettes. According to Alan Bean, he said, We liked the idea. It was a way to be a team and build esprit de corps. So the team decided to go with a 1969 Corvette with a stock 427 cubic inch, 390 horsepower engine with a special color scheme of Riverside Gold with special black wings outlined with white stripes. It also included a special red, white, and blue logo on the front fender with the initials of each person's position on the Apollo crew. Pete Conrad had CDR for Commander, Dick Gordon CMP for Command Module Pilot, and Alan Bean LMP for Lunar Module Pilot. This picture appeared in Life magazine showing the Apollo 12 crew sitting on top of their matching Corvettes. They could also be seen here in this photo with their spacesuits on in front of the lunar lander. To this day, only Alan Bean's car is known to still exist. In a very patriotic scheme, the crew of Apollo 15, Jim Irwin, Al Warden, and Dave Scott had their 1971 454 cubic inch, 390 horsepower Corvettes ordered in patriotic colors of red, white, and blue, respectively with each car having two stripes representing the other two colors of the American flag. You can see them here posed in front of the Lunar Rover that ironically was also designed and built by GM. Both Alan Bean's Apollo 12 Corvette and Al Warden's Apollo 15 Corvette are currently on display at the National Corvette Museum, which is celebrating the 50-year anniversary of the first moon landing. Sadly, the $1 per year lease program offered by Rathman Chevrolet came to an end in 1971, just as the moon landings were coming to a close the following year. Some at NASA were starting to get concerned that the astronauts were endorsing the Corvette, which they were prohibited from doing according to NASA policy. It was also reported that public complaints also led to the end of the program. However, Jim Rathman's lease program that allowed the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo astronauts to lease new Corvettes each year for a dollar has forever fused together the image of astronauts and Corvettes. While the program has come to an end, many astronauts have chosen a Corvette as their car of choice. Astronaut Scott Kelly, who holds the U.S. longevity record in space by spending a year aboard the International Space Station, currently drives a 2016 C7 Corvette Stingray convertible. He recently spoke at the C8 launch on July 18th and was quoted later in a CNET Roadshow interview saying, I've always been a big Corvette fan. As a kid, I had a Corvette poster on my wall. Later, I got to the point where I could get my own and I look forward to maybe getting this one here when it comes out. He also went on to say he hoped they'd bring back the $1 a year lease program, but for retired astronauts. So there's a look back at how the Corvette and the space program relationship began. So if you like this video and the concept for the channel, please subscribe and hit the like button below. 